suppose we, before we ever get to the field, we have to check out the tractor. Yeah. You know? um, so, what, what checks do we carry out here, John, just on the back of this? The most important thing is to have the lift arms the same length. And we're going to measure that with John. From the pin there at the top to the center of the pin. On the bottom. Okay, I'll go back here now. the center of the center. Center, center, we're 73 centimeters, John. Yep, so the other one is saved. And we're going to check our reaction close to that. 73. 73, yep. bang on down, yep. Okay. So then, uh, our tire pressure is going to pop in now as well. And what pressure are you running with the tires? I was running at 70 pounds pressure. Too. Yeah, it sounds like a little over a bar pressure. Just to give us enough traction, we need to have some of the lugs on the ground. Yeah. An awful lot of people are telling have the tires too hard because if you're bringing a load of grain or something the day before, yeah. and you're not getting the proper grip. And also you're reducing the compaction, John, in, in, the, in the field, when you have a wider, a wider tire pit. Right. But them tires are actually wide, actually, John, just looking at the points. Where are they there? This is a 480. Um, 480s, yeah. yeah. Nice, tidy, nice, tidy tire for plowing. Yeah, nice tire for plowing, yeah. And John, we were talking before about trying to get the tra tractor solved from Crabbin. So that's on the wheel widths. Yeah, the wheel widths are normally on a tractor this size and over. The wheels are welded, so there's no yeah. adjustments in the level. Right. So, so okay. normally about 1 meter tractor or 1 meter 30 maybe, inside welding. Yeah, we're 120, 126 there, okay, John. Yeah, so the front one. Whatever they are on the back like that, the front one should be, say, 50, uh, 25, 50 millilitres yeah. wide, inside yeah. length. And that allows the tractor to run onto a, you know, a straight line. Yeah, because you have, you, have you have the angle to steer at the front, it's not tightening down yet. That's right. John, and this, the, 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 the same way. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and the plowing has to be, the plow has to be free. Yeah. Otherwise, you can try to steer the tractor around the field. Yeah. I see a lot of lads when the plow is set and they try to change it by shoving it over with the stabilizer. Not the right thing to do. No, because then they have to hold on to the steering wheel. Otherwise, the plow, the tractor will drive over the plow or over the plow and the stubble ground and plow the ground. Yeah. And here, if you look at here, then, John, the topping, you can't do anything under just in the topping. And you get to the top. We have it on the plow, yeah, in the field. I suppose that's the next step, John. If we go we wrong? Yeah. Okay. For, this, for this one here, we need three double acting valves, yeah. two for turnover, two for the front furrow width, and two for the very width itself. Plow and the springs. The, the rod in the centre here is adjusted from this one, and it has to be one to two millimetres from the side of the plow here. This rod, and the reason for that is as it trips, it will come over towards the right hand side. So we need to have enough clearance here also that it has enough space if it hits a big, a, a massive big rock. Then when we have that adjustment, we adjust this one. Then that the spring here is seventy centimetres exactly from centre to centre. And when you set that up with this, uh, with this rod here, with the notches, there's notches on the... On, on the, on the and that's on your spanner, John, that's... Spanner on both ends, you see the notch there. Pretty good, John. I'm just, going, I'm just going to throw a tape on that as well. I want to be, that should be 70 centimetres. Right, John, just, we need to put it in the centre. Sorry. All right. 70, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 70 centimetres, we can see it there. Okay. And then if you want to... Um, Increase, you can fit uh, more tension on the, on the trip release, you can fit an extra number five spring here. And each, each spring that we fit extra gives an extra 100 kg pressure on the tip. And John, 
go near that spring. Why would, why would an operator go near the spring? Um, for example, if you wanted to plough, maybe like some potato guys were ploughing up in North Dublin, County Mead, ploughing 12, 13 inches deep. So therefore, you need, there's extra pressure coming on the, the trip system. So we need to have more tension on it to keep it rigid in the ground. And John, would it be right in saying that the, the, the kind of flatter that spring is, that's at, at its, most, its strongest position. As it's bent, it's not actually... You know, it's the it's weakest, it's in its trip position. That's correct, yeah. As it is now, is at 70 centimetres, at this, this angle, is as strong as it's ever going to be. Yeah, very good. Yeah. And John, th- these are the kind of checks we're doing on the plough before we get to the, to the field. You probably might, you'd have some adjustment to do in the field also. It's not a big, it's not a big job to do it, adjust it on the move. No, well, we're finished with the, with the tractor because we've gone through that end of it. So any adjustments now will be on the plough. And to get the plough, um, the leg vertical at 90 degrees to the ground, this adjustment here on both sides... The stoppers, will, yeah. Will, the stoppers will angle the plough in the right position for you. And John, we're looking here at the top link as well. We're ploughing in the slotted hole. Yes. So what I'm ploughing now, this will be somewhere around the centre of that slotted hole. So it'll all the time be floating. You'll see it yeah. when, when we're moving. And John, another thing that we... Like, boards do wear. Everything wears in a plough, like. Yes. So... How, when we, if, if a board is changed, how do we make sure that it's at the right, that it goes back into the right position? I know they're not worn on this plow now, but wh- yes. what checks is on it, or what, how well, are the angles on it? It's an ES85, so 85 is the distance between the bodies. So the distance should be 85 in all positions on the plow, from tip to tip, from, from side, from the end of the board here to the end of that board, should be 85. 85, yeah. yeah. So that's how you, you know where the measurement is, and the adjustment is here on the back. If you need to push it or pull it a little bit on these. And John, I see in this model now it's different from the plough I'm normally used to with a number 8 body. These are number 28, 28 bodies. 28 is for the wider furrow. And the reason the longer stay is, uh, the stay is on it because it's so long, the body, and if you, uh, you need extra support if you hit something at this point. Yeah, and that's for the bigger tractors really, John, that, that body to give yeah. that work with tyres up to 7.10. Very good. Yeah. And John, just from moving down to the back here, just onto the, the depth wheel, I suppose if we come around to the side of the plough, this is a kind of a depth wheel combi wheel. This is the depth wheel combi wheel, so our settings for our depth are independent each side here, mm-hmm. by selecting this and adjusting this one. And John, when, when you set the, the wheel to run on the plough, you're, you're essentially running the back side really on the wheel and the front end is controlled by the lift arms on the slot. Just the lift arms, yeah, because the top link is not doing anything. Anything. In the slot. In the slot. You only so need the top link to lift it at the headland. And, and then your, your plough is running parallel to the ground. If it's nose diving, obviously you're too low on the front linkages. That's right. You know, and then if you're too deep behind, then your, your wheel is, needs adjustment. We need adjustment. So, and also the angle then, as we said before, to get the leg at 90 degrees. Another p- point, John, and I, I'm talking about the points here, but uh, uh, that could throw out the plough for you is if the points are bent uh, or a shear is bent. Yeah, well, the chances of the shear being bent uh, slim. Slim, yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. With, the, with the trip, trip release. release yeah. Yeah. It'd have to be a really big rock to do it and driving really fast. I don't think you should be able to bend them, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know? And as the, as the points wear, John, they normally wear uniformly down, so it's changed all the set at the same time. Well, they should do. If you have the plough level, you're ploughing at the same depth, so the wear should be the same on the back as in the front. Front, yeah. If you see a plough worn more in the front, it's because the plough is, is angled too much, too deep in the front. Too deep in the front, yeah. yeah. Have a look at it, John. Just you can see the puppy. She's, she's square behind the tractor and she's floating as well. That takes a lot of pressure off the top thing, pushing or crabbing against it. John, in all your years of plowing, how, what do you think the, the biggest changes have come on now, say from the plow back from the 90s, and uh, say the first reversible to this model we have today now? The, what model is it, John? The E is it? model ES85. ES85. Yeah. Well, the beam would be the most important thing because the amount of beam is all uh, planted and bolted together. So it's a continuous beam now, John, is it? Beam, it's not going to break. John, we can see here there's very little effort uh, pulling this plough here today. Four cylinder dice. Yeah, I'll find it here with this one because it's. Um 
Yeah. Conditions are good as well. Yeah. Just looking at the plough is really set well, John, and the steering is not. Yeah. See, no fighting the steering, the plough and the steering aren't fighting together. Yeah, uh, that's the secret. Uh, fuel consumption, everything comes into it now. Yeah. Wear and tear in general. You know, stress on the track, the coughing, lift arms, everything. I remember doing a calculation, John, that uh, before that the metal was costing me roughly five to six euro an acre on metal with a plough, yeah. and then. If I burn in 10 or 11 litres of fuel, maybe more, 15, it's cost me around 20 euro an acre to plough, like just with diesel fuel and labour, like you know. Yeah, yeah. But you can see here if the plough is set right, you're minimising the wear and the metal. It's running at the right angle behind the tractor. I don't think you've got really the tractor the whole lot. Yeah. On some tractors, uh, where they can do it, if you mess around with the plough and you set it up properly, then you can see the difference in the fuel consumption. Yeah. Which is good. It's a good way of proving the point that if you set your plough properly, it all helps in the end for fuel consumption wear and tear as well. And you like to do a nice job too, John. When you look back across the field and everything is level, the trash is buried. Everything is perfect, yeah. Has to be right. Just on the headlands, what we're doing is we're actually plowing it in the wrong direction, if you like. But what this does is eliminates the ins and outs. We're putting a frame around the headland. 